Sorelgo RMD. Let me show you this uh, search pattern at work here. I'm looking at some films here. I haven't looked at these before. I'm just going to show you exactly how my search pattern works in live and in person. So here I'm looking at the lateral view. First thing I'm going to do is find my T12 level. So I see a rib here. So I'm following that back. So here's my T12. I have L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. So here's the L5 S1 level. So first I'm just going to look at the alignment. So looking at the curvature, slight increased uh, exaggeration here of the lumbar lordosis. I think that's worth mentioning. Noticing here at uh, L4, 5, there's a minimal anterior listhesis there. If you measure that. There's maybe just about uh, two to three millimeters of anterolisthesis of L4 and L5. So looking at the rest of these uh, vertebral bodies for alignment, the alignment looks pretty good. I am noticing some lifting here anteriorly of some of the vertebral bodies. So those are some degenerative changes. So looking at each vertebral body now for height. So L5 looks intact. L4 looks intact. L3 looks intact. L2 looks intact. L1 looks intact. I'm going to check the thoracic vertebral body so I don't want to miss a fracture of the thoracic spine. All right, so lumbar vertebral bodies look good for height. I don't see focal osteolytic or osteoblastic lesions. I'm going to come back in through the pedicles and look at the posterior elements. Something I'm noticing here at the L5-S1, there is some facet arthropathy here, some facet sclerosis. I'm noticing the same thing here at a couple different levels here. So uh, definitely the sclerosis here, which means there's facet arthropathy at the Maybe from L3 down to L5, so there could be possibly central canal narrowing. Something to think about. As I keep moving backwards, I look at the spinous processes here. You can notice how these spinous processes are basically kissing each other. These spinous processes are enlarged. This is a condition known as Bostrop's disease. This can limit uh, movement. Basically, it can decrease extension here. You can see, so that's something I think worth mentioning. Then looking at these. Uh, neural canals here. This one might be slightly uh, stenosed from some uh, facet disease and a little bit of uh, lipping here the, at the posterior aspect of the vertebral body there. These other neural canals look okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and look at the disc levels. So looking at the L5-S1 disc, there's probably at least moderate loss of the disc height. There is this disc ostified complex anteriorly, so this disc is somewhat fused together, there could be definitely a lot of loss of motion here at this motion segment. Uh, coming to L4, L5, there's definitely at least moderate height loss of this disc. At L3, L4, there's what I would call uh, posterior disc uh, space narrowing or disc volume loss posteriorly, at least a moderate degree. Maybe the same thing here at uh, L2, L3, and L1, L2. So definitely some multi-level disc height loss. So let's go to the frontal view. So first thing I'm noticing, there is a mild, very mild, left convex curvature in the lumbar spine. Apex is at uh, about 2, 3. So here's my T12 level. Here's L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. So I'm basically going to zoom in and look at the uh, transverse process, pedicle, spinous process coming across. So here's L4. Not seeing the pedicles that well. That could be due to uh, angulation on the tube in this case. Theoretically, there could be metastatic disease or something else that's uh, obliterating the pedicle, but uh, I don't want to go out on a limb just yet. Noticing these transverse processes are kind of hard to see, so I've mentioned that, meaning that I can't exclude possibly disease in the transverse processes. Uh, again, these pedicles are sort of hard to see, and I think that's due to overall just kind of the positioning of the patient. So that's kind of the information I'm getting out of the front. I'm not a ton of information here. All right, now I'm at the cone down L5-S1. So here's my L5-S1. Again, at least moderate height loss here with an anterior discostified complex. Am I seeing spondylolysis at L5? I would say I'm not definitively seeing it. So this pretty much concludes my search pattern. What can I say about this spine? Uh, definitely this anterolisthesis I'll mention at L4, L5, uh, minimal, and I'll give the millimeters of anterolisthesis. Talk about uh, mild to moderate multi-level disc disease. Definitely some multi-level facet arthrosis, the lower lumbar spine. May have spinal canal stenosis, and this is something where I'd say consider MRI for further evaluation of the central canal and the neural canals for stenosis. 
this Bostrich disease I will also mention because that could be limiting his movement. And uh, that's about it. I might mention that there's some limitations on not seeing the pedicles that well. And if there's a really high concern for metastatic disease, they, they could do other workup. Certainly an MRI could help exclude metastatic disease, again, if that's being suspected. So that's kind of my search pattern at work for a lumbar spine x-ray. I hope that was helpful. It's Rob RMD. If you like this, go ahead and click like below or subscribe for additional content. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care.